Namaskar. Today I'd like to talk about greediness. It's one of the six enemies of the mind, together with physical desire, infatuation, anger, pride, and jealousy. And why is it an enemy? Because it stops our movement towards the subtle, towards our spiritual goal. And greediness comes in various forms. You know, today it's actually considered a vice, a virtue, not a vice. Bollywood, Hollywood movie like The Wolf of Wall Street is very popular. It's actually about a, a stock market traders that, that earn millions of dollars driven by the instinct of greed, unfortunately. So, but actually greediness is very harmful for our overall well-being. Uh, one example would be in, in the United States where 42% of adults are obese. And you know, obesity can lead to all kinds of health problems, diabetes, high blood pressure, heart disease, and so on. So the, the, another type of greediness we would say would be something intellectual. You know, when I, when I want to have knowledge and share that knowledge with others, that's very, very okay. But when I'm gaining that knowledge and I'm trying to, you know, use it for my own advantage, it's a type of intellectual greediness. But one good thing is open source software, because that is a, an example of non-greediness when it comes to intellectual property. So as long as the society has materialism as its main goal, then we will always be having to, the, the, the conditions will be present for greed. So we have to make sure that, you know, as spiritual aspirants, we're following, it's the fifth principle, you know, the yamas and niyamas, the universal principles of life, which we teach in the channel. The fifth one is actually aparigraha. And that means not to overaccumulate, not to be greedy, not to overaccumulate those things that we don't need for the maintenance of our, you know, of our well-being or the well-being of our family and so on. So this is an important principle to follow. And also when we, you know, I was used to, um, I remember Gandhi's famous quotation, <laughs> there's room for every man's need, but not for every man's greed. And in, in, a, in a family of 10, if one person's taking 90% of the, of the resources, then of course that's very much unfair. So the founder of the tantric tradition, which we are, we're teaching in our channel, Satyashiva, he said, greediness is the root cause of all evils. Because the more greedy we are, the less, the more restless we are as well. They go together. So the more we desire, the less, the less peaceful we are. And it's more difficult to, to practice meditation and feel the subtle, subtleness within our own self. So one of my colleagues, he was very fond of toasted bread. So much so that he got the name Tata Toast. <laughs> So one of the good ways to overcome greediness is to give it away. Give away your favorite food to others. In this way, like any bad habit or any wrong thought, reorienting the mental flow you know, by thinking the opposite is the best way to overcome that bad thought or that bad habit. You know? And another practice that we can do is known as Vaisho Chita Seva. That means to serve, help others through physical means whether it's food or clothing or, or money, helping those, those persons. You know? And um, I remember whenever I would go to Durban in South Africa, one of the yoga members would say, Dada, you take my car and run around. He would never allow me to fill the petrol in the car because he felt this was his way of serving and giving back because he wanted to, you know, he realized that in his type of work that he did, he had to be able to control his greed instinct. And I used to work in Indonesia, and I, I mentioned in one, one video before that in Indonesia, there, it's a very easygoing way of life. People are very relaxed because, you know, one of my yoga students said, Dada, we're, we're poor because we're rich. <laughs> and what he meant to say is that because the tropical climate allows so much fruits and vegetables to grow all year round. So there, there's mango, papaya, banana in the backyard because it, the, the, the weather is so favorable for these foods. You know? So they don't have to stress hard. But in any case, there's a, a word in, the, in their language. It's called rijiki. Rijiki or fortunate, blessed. And it's in on all the motor rickshaws in, in Indonesia. No. 
And basically what it means is that, you know, if somebody has this virtue, that they don't, you know, they're very happy with whatever comes in their, in their life. You know, that, that can, mental contentment is a very important value in that society. So this is another example of how we can overcome this feeling of greediness. And there's one more good example of a non-greedy person, and that's our own dog. <laughs> you know dogs? They have two good habits. They wake up at the slightest sound, and whatever food you give them, they're content with that. They don't run after more. <laughs> uh, in, in, um, in our yoga house in Los Angeles, they're distributing eight tons of food every month. And they're feeding 2,000 needy people every, every month. And the beautiful thing is that, that that food is completely okay. Maybe slightly over the expiry date, but it's completely safe and nutritious. And so all the volunteers also can get something from, from doing the service. That's not the purpose, but they, they get some other advantage in another way. <laughs> so, and I would like to say, especially about the meditation because we prefer to call it intuitional practice or spiritual meditation. If we have a desire to merge into that infinite omnipresent entity, that which is the witness or inside of our own self, blissful and ever radiant, then that's, that greediness is not doing harm to anyone, harmless greed actually. And one of my yoga, uh, one of the persons I medit taught meditation many years ago, he loves to meditate every day because he wants to feel this. He has strong yearning for this experience of that spiritual entity. And so he's 80 years old, but his skin is so, is so soft and smooth and his cells are so light and body so pure <laughs> just from that many, many hours of meditation. So this type of meditation which we do, that's the beautiful thing, that the more we do it, we call, prefer to say intuitional practice. The more that we do it, these negative, or we say the enemies, like greed, anger, infatuation, jealousy, they, they recede from the mind. And that's why meditation is a struggle. We're actually going against that force of ignorance we call avidya maya, that force of ignorance that tries to you know, keep us in the lower levels and, and keep us bound by the enemies of the mind. So that's why we may struggle with the meditation. There's, that's also a sign of progress. So I hope, just to recap, the best way to overcome greediness of food is to give, give it away, your favorite dish, to others, and live a minimalist lifestyle. You know, apari, follow this fifth principle, aparigraha, non-greediness or not, accumulation, non-accumulation of those things we don't need for our, our life. And do a type of baisho chita seva, give, help someone, with the food, clothing, somebody who's in need, a donation, in this way, we will be, and, and continue the meditation because it's the meditation. We get that spiritual food. And when we have that spiritual food, that is the most powerful nourishment we can have for, for our mind and body. So I hope that with these uh, suggestions and hints, it will help, help all of us to overcome this habit and other enemies of the mind. And maybe we can set a good example for others to follow also. Thank you. Namaskar.